Okay, my friends, I have somebody here who's a friend, uh, Jim Bolin, who is a, uh, a geologist. And I want him to explain his credentials. He's been following what I've been doing. And as a geologist, he has every right to speak in this realm. And I, and, and I agreed. We, we just talked just a second ago. He says, I have some things to bring up that might attack you. Is that okay? I said, absolutely. If you can attack me, attack. So, Jim, if you got some attacks, buddy, go for it, buddy. So, anyway, this is Jim Bowen. Jim, go ahead and talk to us. Hey, thank you, Roger. I'm Jim Bowen. Uh, my background is in geology, both construction geology and environmental geology. Uh, in the construction part, I was mostly concerned with the, uh, the, the condition of the foundation for supporting a building, a large building, dam, bridge, or that kind of thing. And for environmental geology, I was interested in location of contamination uh, that impacts soil and drinking water. Uh, I, I didn't dwell a lot in paleontology or sediment stratigraphy other than what that sediment may have had to do with supporting of a building. That, that is, in fact, the engineering geology aspect. So uh, I'm ready to work with Roger. I, find, I think he's got some, some very interesting ideas. But go ahead, Roger. Well, I, no, I was wondering if you had something that you could point to that we could discuss that you, you think I might be having wrong. Okay. That well, we, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm a, I believe I, I'm a creationist. I believe in... Uh, in creation, as the Bible lays it out, and I know right off the bat that's going to conflict with mainstream theology, but I'm, I'm, I'm rectifying that in my mind as we go along. Um, I have changed my outlook from the earth being millions or billions of years old to it being much less, more like in the 6,000 or so years old, somewhere in there. Uh, and uh, a lot of what Roger's showing me uh, helps me in that regard. Uh, so uh, go ahead, Roger. All right. Well, you, I think you agree you understand about Typhon in the desert here, the big gigantic dragon attacking the fish, right? Right. All right and you, do, you agree with that? It's not just geology. That is previous. Well, I'll put it this way. First, first. I I remained open-minded the entire time, but first, my uh, my first opinion was to keep open-minded and listen to you, and I honestly believed that I would end up disagreeing with you the first time I had a conversation with you. I felt like I would uh, come at you immediately and say, no, this, this can't be, and that goes back to my training in geology. Uh, I, I was I was convinced that uh, what you were showing me was was you know physical geology and it and it agreed with what's taught in school. Now I'm beginning to see what you're saying about the uh, the biological aspect to what we see here, like especially here in Taifa. Yeah, well, not not. It's so obvious now. The deeper I get, and you know, the more I look, the deeper I get. Now, and and everything is like that. I'm learning to learn more. <laughs> and I show the 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 throat going all the way down and spitting out all this really nasty stuff I just showed a second ago. And if anybody wants to go back and look at nasty, they can go back now. They spit, he spit this down at this fish, and this is the back of this gigantic fish. All right, so most if anybody doesn't know about it, I've shown this hundreds of times, literally. And it's this gigantic fish. Now, there's a discoloration in the back, and this is the fin. And the fin is, it's just a fin, it's not, it doesn't have the kind of flesh like flesh, which has a lot of vascular networks in there. And what is vascular network? Blood vessels, veins, arteries, capillaries. 
even has lymph nodes. And I can show all of those right in this spot on his back. You see where all the stuff came out of Typhon? You see, you know what I'm talking about, Jim, right? It comes, all that black stuff comes down and lands on Typhon's fin. His back yeah. is right here. This is the fleshy spot on his back. Now, let's home right in deep and let's look at the actual blood vessels and the arterial network. You see what you're looking at? It actually ate through the scales. Now we're into the arteries, the blood vessels, the capillaries, the veins. All right, you see them? Right. These big ones are where the main supply of blood is. They feed off each one of these little feeds is called a blood vessel. After the blood vessels, there is capillaries. The capillaries are right here at the very end, and they, see, see them right here, all these? They feed right into the vein network that sucks up all that blood. And it feeds it back up to the heart and the, um, you know, to be cleaned up and get some more oxygen and all that stuff. Now, I was just looking at this the other day because I said, well, if I can see all of these blood vessels, I should be able to find some lymph nodes. Because the lymph nodes are what protect you from the attacks of toxins. Where do you see this? This black stripe running right down here are lymph nodes. And it's being attacked. Look at this. You see this stuff coming down on that lymph node? Yeah, now, now if that were a actual, if that were a human, what would that be? Would that be the antigen? Yeah, say would that, that again, the, what would it be? What, what would that be? Would that be the poison in the lymph gland or would that be the lymph itself? This is the lymph node, this big black spot here. Oh, that's the node. That's, that's the right. node. Now, all of these feeder ducts coming in, you see them? This right. is feeding in all of the garbage that's in your body. This is the lymphatic system. That's oh, why it's this, it it's this pink color. It's, it's a, a, a different than the rest. All of this pinkish color is lymph. And what you, what's supposed to happen is inside this, it detoxifies all this stuff. You see it feeding in here? You see this layer? Right. You see all this webbing here? Right. That Those are membrane. It, it's just phenomenal, but it's true. Now, what happens is all of that stuff feeds in here. It's supposed to detoxify it and send it out to be... To be put into your feces and so forth. <clears throat> now, that's one lymph node, and they go in a whole layer. You see, here's another one. Same exact same thing, see it? Right. That's not accidental. You see the out layer over here? You see here? Right. These are lymph nodes on this fish <laughs> trying to fight back against these toxins that are coming down from this. You see it right here? That whole yeah. layer. And well, you know, and I, I tell you, when, when you bring it up to a certain point, you can see an aureola around the actual node, which I think, I mean, I'm okay, hold on, hold on at that magnification. And go down, yeah, that, that looks like what I've seen, what a little bit I've seen of an anatomical drawing of a lymph gland. Oh, it's a hundred percent. I have I have the book here, I, and I've shown it over and over. You see what happens? You see around the edges all around here, and you see right. all, you see all that like like um, spider webbing looking stuff. Right. All right. What happens is the lymph node, the the lymph duct, brings down all of the crap that's in your body to the lymph node, the black ball here. That black ball is supposed to be infused with all kinds of bacteria. That bacteria eats up and destroys the toxins. Otherwise, they will invade your body. So what happens is they come through, they get filtered through this webbing for some reason, and they end up getting into the center and created into this valley and then they're, at that time, they issue out to be sent out into your disposal system, basically. Right. 
Right. All right, so, but they have to detoxify it. They have to get rid of all this stuff. So if this toxins, because these are toxins, these are bad, bad, bad stuff. Now, let me ask you at this point, it, are the toxins the dark gray stuff that's approaching in from the outside? It's like, the, the, the it, right here, these little tubes coming here. You see them? Yes, right. Whatever's in there is bad stuff. So that, that would be the dark spots? Probably. Okay, I see, I see. Probably, because when you look at the, the red blood in the um, blood vessels, I think they still have, um, they're, there's still spots in there that are very, very biological. Whenever you see something growing, it's growing in red blood. You see this here? Right. So that that could be that could be iron or, or copper, or copper or some or some metallic ion. Well, it's definitely it's, it's definitely iron. There's no question. Iron. You see, yeah, okay. see the red. Anytime you see red like that, you got iron. Okay. That's fer ferrous oxide with the O3 version, Fe2O3. Gotcha. Fe2O2 is the black version, down here. So we. What's happened is when that creature was killed and and flattened out and covered over in mud, that iron just was frozen in position there, correct? <clears throat> well, yes and no. They still bleed their iron out of them. You see, the, you see uh, they're still bleeding the contents of their bodies. I see. As, as moisture invades the soils, they dispense the rivers and so forth are actually effluents of creatures' bodies. These ponds and pools and all these different colored places. Look right. at this. Let me show you something. You know that blood meal makes things grow extremely green. You, okay. see, you see this? This is the, the dragon scales. You see all the way running up here, right. all the way running up. These are all dragon scales on his throat. You see him? Right, right. Now, we're going towards his head. Let me just back out of here. If we go all the way up, all the way up through these scales, and they're all the same scales, and they have a little hinge in between each of these plates so he can articulate his neck. Otherwise, right. he'd be stuck. He couldn't bend. Right. All right. Now, all of this stuff below, all of this stuff down here is runoff. They call it effluent of a dead, decaying decomposition of a body. But this Makes is his, the, yeah, this right. is his throat, and all of this runoff is bloody black and red blood. That's what happens. Blood is black and red. That's the O2 and the O3 version. Now we know that he spits stuff out, and it comes out of his beards. You know how they all have a beard, right? Right. Look at it's coming right out of his beard. Right. That is nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. Yeah. And it comes down here. Look at that. Why does so, nobody talk about this stuff? If you were, if you are down on the ground there, you would probably be where your cursor is. You would probably be in a bed of some type of sandstone. I'm guessing because. It would be cemented with iron oxide. Does that sound correct? Well, it's uh, they're conglomerations of all kinds of different minerals and silicates and you know whatever washed in there or originally was there. Because okay. here, here's here's the deal. Now you're a geologist. You know that there's all kinds of different names for stones, and a lot of them have very similar characteristics, like. Plagioclase is um, yeah. What's 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 you know a plagio plagioclase is aluminum uh, oxide silicate, I believe. I don't have it right in front of me, but all right. Well, let me tell place and plagioclase, and right. one is a calcium silicate, the other is um, aluminum, aluminum silicate. Correct. That's correct. All right. Now let me tell you something. All of my mud fossils, virtually all of them are coated with feldspar. You know what that is? 
Yes, right. That is aluminum silicate. Right. A hundred percent of feldspar is based on aluminum silicates. Now, they are right next to each other on the peri periodic mm -hmm. table. Uh, aluminum and silicon are one orbital away. Right. Now, they somehow fused with collagen because all of the membranes are made of collagen and every single membrane will turn to feldspar. Okay. <laughs> I see. You follow see, me? I, I don't know what kind of anatomy collagen is. I mean, I, I think it's, it's sort of a tough fat, isn't it? It's a, it's a fatty lipid. Uh, but a there's fatty lipid, okay. Yeah, but, okay. But there's 28 different different types of collagens, and it depends on where they are in the body. But let me finish up with this. this uh, what I was talking about was the red blood. Now, right. red blood has the nitrogen, basically, which makes plants grow extremely green. And feather meal is the same stuff, only feather meal doesn't doesn't react so quickly it, it sort of lingers whereas the blood meal really pops and boy I tell you it makes things green you know you know about blood meal making things green yes I, I believe so yes all right now you could buy it it's, and it it does make things green and it makes them grow very very vibrant now so here we are with with Typhon's head his whole body and all that flashy stuff that runs down the dragons and China and all that. Right down here, you see this black spot? Right. And this red spot? And right. this, you see this green spot? Right. What the hell is a green spot doing in the middle of the desert? Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> what is that doing there, man? Well, yeah. guess what? It's his neck is cut, his throat is cut. By, tight, by Zeus's great and mighty sword. I'm telling you. Right. And that is blood still running out from his great and mighty gash. I, I got it. All right. And then this is right yeah. here. You can see the red blood is all piled up here in the desert. And you see all these little growths or whatever they are. They are, are living on red blood makes things grow green. It's just a, what it does. Right. And right. wherever you see all these little p clusters of plants, you know, all over the prairie and so forth, you just see, well, there's one over here and one over here and one over here. They're sort of spark you know, they're spread out kind of evenly. They're growing on some kind of tissue. The whole earth is made of creatures' bodies. Right, right. I cannot account for it, Jim, other than to say that the ancient texts talked about the earth being made of of creatures bodies right like Ymir was the Norse god who was supposed to his head or something his body his flesh or something created the earth and um, Gaia is the same story he made it with the sun, with the sky and had the earth and then actually had Typhon too. Typhon is supposed to be, you know, Ty Gaia's child. Did you know that? Uh, I think so. I, I can't keep all my mythology straight, but I did look into that. Yeah, yeah Apollodorus. We're going to go through Revelations. I, I, you, we have to look at everything with a new look. I started going back on Revelations, Jim. Absolutely blowing my mind. Yeah. Because you now I'm looking at things with 100% uh, new eyesight right so um anyway we got a we got a lot of thinking to do okay let me go back let me go you back a little bit to where the streams flow and the, you know when you were uh, running your cursor and showing me where this where the stuff was running out of that animal oh okay 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 i'm sorry i get i get caught up and i lose track that what what it is is um, you know, what I was going to show you is the text that talks about this. Because we know that Typhon has a very red, flashy eye. You see his eye there? Red and all flared back? Yeah. 
You see it all running back here? Right. All right. His hair is all unkempt and flashy and fluty. It's running all over the place. Right. His body runs all the way across North Africa. Right. And his, this is still his tail. And again, all of this stuff is running off. This is decomposing flesh. Right. All right. But now, don't don't you believe Typhon is laying on Mother Earth, though? Oh uh, yes, yes. But Mother Earth was a, a creature, is a corpse. That's what Jesus said. He said, "When you come to find out the Earth, you, when you, uh, I'll show you the, I'll show you the text in a minute." But okay. let, let, re, remind me to show you that. It's Gospel of Thomas. I think it's 56 or 80. But both of them talk about this, these creatures being the earth. Now listen, okay. we're running all the way from where you see my cursor. Right. It, actually, the tail it goes all the way to here, Flutie. And the, you, you just saw his, right. his um, dragon scaled tail right here. Right. <clears throat> right. And you see all this stuff running off of this. That's not that. This, those are also transition metal colors. That is, now he, this has a cloaca. Reptilians and birds had cloacas, and here's the cloaca right here. Hey, can you spell that? Cloaca is C L O A C A. A C A. Okay. Cloaca, and here's where the cloaca runs down. Right down this tube. Okay, it runs right down this tube and flows out into here. This is all poop. Right. And they're living in the poop. Right. That's the poop part where the black stuff comes. This right. one over here, the white one, is where the, the uh, fluid comes. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. That's how a cloaca works. They come together right here and mix together right in this spot right right all right you got one spot over here and the fluids come here and when they come out they mix together just like they do in a bird poop when it hits your window right <laughs> and and it probably makes pretty darn good fertilizer that's why they're living there brother right that's why they're living there look at this is this is a good sized pooper a whole town has grown up around it. Oh yeah, they they know where the they know where the fertility was. Now, did they know what they were doing here, or just you know got lucky? Right. But that's that's the cloaca. There's no question in my mind. I and I have found it in all of them, and I mean bigger than this. Now, so we know this. He starts over here, he runs all the way over, it's like 1,100 miles, at least, probably more. Now, let me show you something that Apollodorus wrote. Apollodorus 1.6.3, hold on. 1 1.6.3. Now, this is when the, the gods had overcome the giants. Earth was still more enraged, had intercourse with Tartarus, and brought forth Typhon, a hybrid between man and beast. This is what they wrote about Typhon. All right. This... He, he, they say that when the gods overcame the giants, Earth was more enraged, had intercourse with Tartarus, brought forth Typhon in Sicilia, a hybrid between man and beast. Now, when they see a hybrid between man and beast, the only thing I see them referring to is his thighs being like a human thighs. They don't say his head, they don't say anything else. Listen, that's why people say, oh, no, 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 he couldn't be because he doesn't, he's got a dragon head. No. They never say anything about his head. It says he was a hybrid between man and beast. Remember that, a hybrid. In size and strength, he surpassed all the offspring of earth. Well, he was pretty big. 
as far as the thighs, his legs, his thighs, he was of human shape and of such prodigious bulk that he outtopped all the mountains, his head often brushed the stars. Eleven hundred miles tall. Right. <laughs> that's that's twice or three times as high as a space station. Right. Now, one of his hands reached out to the west, the other to the east, and from them projected a hundred dragon's heads. I have not been able to find that. From the thighs downward. So all they were ever talking about him being human was his thighs. From those downwards, he had huge coils of vipers. When drawn out, reached all over the place to his very head and emitted a loud hissing. His body was all winged, as I showed you, unkempt, I showed you. Hair streamed on the wind from his head, I showed you. Fire flashed from his eyes. I showed you fire flashing from his eyes. Such and so great was Typhon, when hurling kindled rocks, he made for the very heavens, hissing and shouting at the gods. He attacked the gods. Listen to this. He spouted a great jet of fire from his mouth, as I showed you, actually from his, his uh, beard. When the gods saw him rushing at heaven, listen to this, man. They made for Egypt in flight. The gods started running like hell. Right. And being pursued, they changed their forms into those of animals. They turned into animals. Now, wait till right. I tell you about Venus. Wait till I tell you about Venus. Don't let me forget that. Okay. Zeus pelted Typhon at a distance with thunderbolts and slashed his neck. And it goes on about then Typhon overcame Zeus, cut his tendons and, and ripped out his tendons. And then Zeus got his tendons sewed back together. He came back and killed Typhon. So they ended up killing Typhon. Right. Now, so they, what happened was they ended up in Egypt in flight and being pursued, they changed their forms into animals. So Zeus pelted Typhon with his thunderbolts and at close quarters struck him down with an Admonton sickle. And as he fled, pursued him closely as far as Mount Cassus, which overhangs Syria. There, seeing the monster sorely wounded, he grappled with him, but Typhon twined about him and gripped him in his coils. Now, wrestling the sickle from him, he severed the sinews in the hands and feet of, of um, Zeus. Zeus. <laughs> yeah. And he lifted him up on his shoulders, carried him through the sea, to Sicilia and deposited him on arrival in a cave. Likewise, he put away the sinews and hid them in a bear skin. <laughs> this yep. is insane. I read this. Yeah, go ahead. It's all right. So he set to guard them the she dragon Delphine, who was half bestial maiden, was set to guard them. But Hermes and Agippin stole the sinews back and fitted them to fit it then un unobserved to Zeus. So they fixed Zeus back up. Right. Having recovered his strength, Zeus suddenly from heaven, riding in a chariot of winged horses, pelted Typhon with thunderbolts and pursued him to mount to a mountain called Naea, where the fates beguiled the fugitive. So he's in trouble now. He tasted of the ephemeral fr fruits in the persuasion that he would be strengthened thereby. So he thought he was going to be all right. So being again pursued, he came to Thrace, and in fighting at Mount Hamas, he heaved whole mountains. But when these recoiled on him through the force of the thunderbolts, a stream of blood gushed out of the mountain. Now, they, they claim it was a different mountain than this, but anyway, and they say that from that circumstance, the mountain was called Hamus, Mount Hamus, which is not where we're at the Atlas Mountains. But anyway, when he started to flee through Sicilia Sea, Zeus, Zeus cast Mount Etna on top of him, which is in Sicily. This doesn't fit what I show, but 
Anyway, this is a huge mountain from which down to this day they say that blasts of fire issue from the thunderbolts that were thrown. So much for that subject. Now this is Apollodorus. This is in, I believe this is 180 BC he wrote this. But okay. th this was the Greek. This is the Greek source. And if you go to Apollodorus 1.1, he talks about Earth being Gaia. Oh, okay, okay. And the, and Hercules and all of that stuff. And there's stories that were just, it's just amazing. And, and it's the same thing. This is Apollodorus. Um, what was his name? Ovid. Ovid is cool. Wait to see this. The Metamorphosis. This is the book he wrote, Metamorphosis by Ovid. All right, this is Metamorphosis book five. And this is when Phineas was turned to stone. All right, Phineas seeks revenge for the loss of his bride. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Phineas turns to stone. Here it is right here. Phineas is turned to stone. Now, I'm telling you right now, this stuff happened. Listen, yeah. to, listen to this. This was, there's a story behind him cutting off Medusa's head. But he had cut off Medusa's head and was bringing it back to present it to his, his grandfather. And as he's coming back, he gets attacked. So he says, they, are, they all deserve the punishment they suffered except one of Perseus's warriors. Perseus is our guy. He's the good guy. Now, and it was a Contius got, got popped. So Perse he, only one of Perseus' warriors was destroyed. He said, while he was fighting on his side, a Contius saw the Gorgon's head and took the shape of hardened stone. Astasius struck him with his long sword, thinking he was still alive. He was turned into stone in a snap of a fingers. So he thought he was still alive. The blade gave a high-pitched ringing noise. While Astagius stood there amazed, the same power transformed him. He remained there with a wondering look on his marble face. It would take a long time to tell the names of the middle ranks of men. Two hundred bodies survived the fight. Two hundred were turned to stone at the sight of the Gorgon's head. That's what it says. Now, now, so listen to this. This gets funny. So now Phineas is the guy that says, I'm going to, I don't care about this Gorgon's head. I'm, listen to this. He says, now at last, Phineas regrets the unjust fight, I guess. Well, what can he do? He sees figures in diverse attitudes. They're all amazed. And he recognizes the men and calling each one out by name, asks his help. Disbelieving, he touches the bodies nearest to him. They're all marble. He averts his gaze from Perseus, and in supplication, he stretches out his hand in acknowledgement. His arms still held out towards him. Perseus cries out, You have won. Take away that monstrous thing of yours. Remove your head of the Medusa, whoever she may be. But that turns men to stone. Take it away, I beg you. It was not hate or desire for power that drove me to war. I took up arms to win a bride. They were having a war over this woman. Your claims were greater than my merits. But, but mine were precedents. He had precedents over him. So I do not regret ending it. Give me nothing except my life. Most resolute of men, the rest is yours. He's going to give me every. just let me live. So speaking, not daring to look towards him to whom he directed his request, Perseus replied, Have no fear, most cowardly Phineas. I will grant both what I can grant and what is a great gift to the fearful. <laughs> you will not suffer the sword. Rather, I will cause you to be an enduring monument through the ages. You will always be seen in my father-in-law's palace. See, he was going back to bring this to his father-in-law. 
Yeah. That, my wife will always may find solace in the statue of her intended. He was supposed to try to take her. So he says, I'll let her see you every day in a marble gaze. Yeah. <laughs> These guys were, this, this just drives me crazy. Man. Where do you hear the story behind him going and his great grandfather and Zeus? Oh, anyway. So anyway, he's, he, he carried, he spoke, and he carried the head of this woman's daughter, who was, who was Medusa, to where Phineas had turned his frightened face. As Phineas tried to avert his gaze, his neck hardened, and the tears on his cheek were turned to stone. Wow. Now, now the frightened face, the suppliant expression, the submissive hands, and the slavish appearance remained in marble. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this a, this is just unbelievable. And yeah. the, the whole story about him going to take Medusa's head was because he was sent there on a suicide mission. Not a, not a suicide, a, you know, he was sent there to, to try to be killed. Yeah, one way thing. They, yeah. yeah, a one way mission. But he, right. he prevailed over her by making a mirror out of a shield. Uh, and he could look okay. into the mirror and it and he could see her and he was able to cut her head off but if you looked at her direct you were done gotcha. so and i all i can tell you as a as a chemical person and a, and a chemist and and all that kind of stuff uh, you know a material scientist the only way that she, they could turn to stone like that and it, it was always their out exterior well it was everything you, you, tears and everything i just can't explain it but it has to do it's got to do with something with frequencies and he was looking in the mirror would change the frequencies that's all i can assume okay yeah yeah it's got to do something with shaking those molecules and making them stable instantly yeah, yeah instantly yeah how that would happen je ne sais pas yeah, yeah, yeah.